I mean, teams should work like any teams meeting okay. should work. Okay. So if someone if someone shares their screen, it should take over one screen, not both. So we'd need to hook up a computer, one of those screens. To Anyone use. who's in the teams meeting can present and it should take up one of those screens. What yeah, so like I plugged in and I don't have a mic anymore. Yeah, so it took my mic away and I have no recording. Because we don't, we, you probably won't want to do that in the room. If the, there's the room not in Teams at all. Oh. Yeah, that's so that. Okay, I didn't realize it crippled the room that bad when they took it. Um, that is weird. Right. Why well, you don't have a mic? Because the, the whole room is not going to be integrated in because that's what the encoder does. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, so we'll it's just going to work out. Just we'll just keep working off. Of all right. It. I apologize. No, it's okay. Thank you so much. Sorry, everyone. So yeah, definitely robust voices. Okay, so um, <laughs> we're gonna be um, we're gonna be having some. Fun. Um, would that be easier for people to hear me? Probably. Okay, I can do that then. We've got you know the best technology here at the city of Flagstaff. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> it's just being used somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> I hear. Okay. Can you all still hear us okay? Okay. Can you all hear me okay if I sit here? Yes. Okay. And um and if we could just do a sound test real quick. Um commissioners um uh um commissioners buyer and is that Tia? Can you scroll down on that agenda, please? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Um. So we have. Yeah. So commissioners by. Uh, so yeah. I think we're. We're just miss, missing Commissioner Conkle today. But just to check, um, Commissioners Byer and Steiger, would you mind um, unmuting yourselves and just saying hi? Hi. Here. Here. Cool. OK, so um, let's do an official roll call then. Um, so commis commissioners who are online, go ahead and unmute yourselves. And um, we'll do our roll call. So um, Chair Kevin White, I am here. Um, Vice Chair Paul Byer. I'm here. Thank you. Commissioner Margaret Steiger. Present. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kristen Conkle. I do not believe uh, Commissioner Conkle is in today. Uh, Commissioner Molly McCormick. Here. All right, thank you. So um, that does give us a quorum. So let's um, let's move on. Um, next item of um, business is the land acknowledgement. The city of Flags the Flagstaff City Council humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Next order of business is public comment. At this time, any member of the public may address the commission on any subject within their jurisdiction that is not scheduled for the commission that day. Due to open meeting laws, the commission cannot discuss or act on items presented during this portion of the agenda. To address the commission on an item that is on the agenda, um, please wait until that agenda item comes up. And if you're on Teams, then um, use the chat function to let the st um, staff know that you would like to comment. Um, and the chair will recognize you when it's your turn. Uh, that said, is, is there any public comment today? I don't see anyone in the chat or waiting room. All right, so I see no public. Um, I see no public comment. So um, we'll move on to the next. Um, we'll move on to the next item. Um, next item is approval of the May meetings minutes. Um, did did anybody have time to look over the May meetings minutes? literate of this month. I did, and I have a, a couple mm -hmm. trivial uh, clarifications to make under, uh, I'll just rip them off now, and uh, under 6 business, 6B, neighborhood sustainability grants. Um, 
uh, an update that Friends of Flagstaff, that should be Friends of Flagstaff's Future, that's the name of the organization. And the next paragraph too, where Chair White has nothing against Friends of Flagstaff, it's Friends of Flagstaff's Future. Um, uh, so, and then let's see. The, oh, and then uh, uh, Nicole Antonopoulos gave an update that the uh, NSG funds were approved to be increased by 25,000, you know, maybe just clarify that's $25,000 for the upcoming cycle. Um, and then in the next one, to increase the amount of NSG awarded funds that almost, first there's no dollar sign, there should be 5,000 to 700 dollar signs. And that would be the, uh, just phrase that so it's not, it sound, almost sounds like we're increasing the total NSG funds from 5,000 to 7,500, but we're, it's really the funds per approved project, you know, so just those little clarifications, I think, would, would make the minutes just fine. Okay. Um, so if I follow that, um, uh, approve, so you, you would like to amend the minutes to say that it's not the total fund, to clarify, it's not the total funds that are increased to five thousand to seven thousand five hundred dollars, but the um, funds per grant. And could you repeat the other one. With well, that, just that friends of Flagstaff should be changed to right. friends of Flagstaff's future, and then. Thank uh, you. Okay. Thank and you. And then the other one. Yeah. Yep. Um. Does anybody have any comments about those modifications? Okay. Um. I have I also have one very minor thing. Um, in um, yeah, so on in item six B, um, there's a note saying Chair White stated he has nothing against friends of Fla um, friends of Flagstaff, and um, as Commissioner Byer said, that it should read friends of Flagstaff future. Um, so I, um, that seems like sort of more neutral or passive, and I, I just wanted it in the record that I, um, I applaud Friends of Flagstaff's future for, um, for returning the grant money when it became clear that they would not be able to um, fulfill their grant. So I wanted to make, I, I just wanted to make that distinction. Um, is are all commission members okay with um, passing the? Or does anybody have any comments on that? No. Um, are all commission members uh, okay with passing the um, with approving the agenda as um, with the proposed modifications? Approve. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? No, I have a motion to okay. make those changes. Um, cool. So we have a motion from Commissioner McCormick to approve with the noted changes. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay. Um, so we have a second from Commissioner Steiger. Um, is there any um, discussion before bringing it to a vote? All right, hearing none, we'll vote on it. Um, commissioners, go ahead and unmute yourselves. All of um, all in favor of approving of approving last month's minutes with voted um, modifications, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. All right, the most the motion passes. Last month's minutes are approved um, again with the um, with the noted um, modifications. All right, next up. So um, I guess we have some introductions to to make with the sustainability staff and a quick update um, on the division to do. Um, so Nicole, I'll pass the floor to you. Okay, thanks. So super excited. Um, that I'm going to actually, if you don't mind, jump ahead. Please do swap the order, but to introduce our newest staff member, Danae Pressler. Uh, she, I'll come, come in, over. do a little hello. Say hi. Thank <laughs> you. And I'm going to actually ask you if she's going to be sharing her screen. Hi, everyone. There we go. Um, 
So, Danae, would you be willing to just share a little bit about yourself and your role here with us? You're welcome to say it to the camera if you want. Sure. Sorry, it's so, so awkward. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm good with it. It's a really yeah. awkward meeting today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let's just call it. Let's roll with the punches. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Danae Pressler, and as Nicole mentioned, I'm the new climate analyst um, taking over DC Altore's position, and I'm going to be focused on um, primarily uh, energy efficiency, electrification, both of buildings and transportation, and uh, carbon capture. Does that cover it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And whatever else gets thrown my way. Yeah, <laughs> and Danae has jumped right in and we're positively thrilled to have her on the team. So where are you um, coming from? What's your background? Yeah, coming from the city of Avondale. So I um, stood up their sustainability program there. I was there just for three years and uh, and then wanted to get out of the valley and made my escape to the city of Flagstaff. Yeah. Glad cool. to have you. Yeah. Welcome. Um, we are happy to have you here. And we'll look forward to seeing what you'll do these next few months and years. And um, if there's any way that the commission can support you, then um, I can't make any promises, but I hope you'll let us know and we'll do our best. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, all right, so Nicole. All right, and then Natalie is here with us today <laughs> um, <laughs> to offer um, our division update. And Natalie is, well, formerly was an intern with us. And then we are so thrilled when she accepted our sustainable food systems VISTA position. And so we, and as I warned Natalie long ago, we won't let you leave. And so <laughs> we at least have her for another year. So but Natalie's here you. this this afternoon to give our division update. And just for a um, reminder to the commissioners that we really encourage all of our team members to rotate and present to the commission, but it's an opportunity for the commission to get to know some of our staff because we know that you actually don't have interaction with all of our staff. So um, that's kind of a twofold for us. All right, take it away, Natalie. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nicole. All right. Um, as Tia just put in the chat, can everyone see the monthly report on the screen? I'm going to take. Let's see. Nope, it still needs to go. Hold on. Sorry. Nope. All right. I was hoping with um, Tia taking over. That would help us, but I. OK, great. We should be back up and running here in a sec. OK. All right, we're good. There we go. Sweet. All right, we got a thumbs up. So it looks like we're good and we'll get started. So for May of 2023, as always getting into this season, the Flagstaff Sustainability Office has been incredibly busy. Um, one of those busy things that we have been doing is stream stewards. Adopt programs are off to a Stellar start with um, nearly a third of the available sections have been adopted, which is amazing. Way to go, community stewards. Very proud of you all. Um, also kicked off the annual watershed cleanup series on May 6th, and volunteers pulled out 11 bags of trash um, on the corner of Butler Ave and South 4th Street. So amazing work. Looks like we had total of 126 service hours between 63 people and almost 40 bags of trash which is amazing so thank you to our community members and our community stewards and um, fourth graders from Kinsey Elementary helped with some of those cleanups as well which is really really amazing um they adopted a section of Sinclair wash so way to go um, in terms of climate action, in May, the Climate Resilience Project went to learn about fire adaptation and resilience in healthy forests, and that was a successful event. Uh, you can see pictures from that event here. Also, a lot of work in equity and engagement with engaging with directly with 90 people, which is impressive, way to go. Um, advisor, equity advisory group offered inputs on the HEPA filter program, um, as well as the youth climate advisory group is now accepting applications for the 2023-2024 school year. So if you know of any youth who would be interested in applying for those positions, it's a really great opportunity. Um, 
Staff also hosted a table during the first Friday art walk as in part of the art in action exhibit and shared information on local climate initiatives, which is awesome. We've also had some work on building fuel switching and reduced energy use through the home weatherization rebate, which has now distributed 100 or 80,000 to residents to incentivize home electrification and weatherization, which is amazing. More stuff from community stewards. Um, total of 255 hours between 153 people with 71 bags of trash collected and 13 bags of recycling between 20 cleanups. That is really, really impressive. Um, and also starting to prepare sandbags for the upcoming monsoon season. So big thanks to everyone for all their hard work um, in community gardens. Really big announcement here is that the Hal Jansen community garden is now complete. We've been working on this garden since March and planning for it since February. And it was a big process that brought in a lot of community members and connected a lot of people, which is really exciting. So we have 18 new raised beds over there and brought in a lot of different people to help put those together. We had a garden warming party over there where over 30 people attended. Um, also other fun things with green schoolyards. We hosted a site visit in partnership with Children and Nature Network and the rest of the Green Schoolyards Flagstaff Coalition, which is encompassing many different people, but to name a few, Terra Birds, FUSD, Coconino County Extension Office, and Killup Elementary. Um, so that was a really successful, awesome field visit where we got to talk about how we could further incorporate green um, spaces into our schools. Um, we also began the expert compost certification series. We hosted a three day composting one on one workshop workshop to kick this off and we processed all the winter overwintered compost at the Bonino community garden and created like sizable amount of compost over the winter. So that was really exciting and we're looking forward to having all of those people who were participating in that program and also our new compost stewards program work to further develop all the compost at the Flagstaff Community Gardens so that we can have more compost to put in our gardens and work to uh, build up that soil. Um, also worked quite a bit on prep for pollinator week, which is actually this week. Um, and just a lot of prep work to make that successful and fun. And um, we put together a pollinator art contest, a couple of planting days, and um, a Be a Pollinator Pal event with the library. As for materials management, um, staff gave two recycling presentations to location organizations and also distributed materials, directly engaged with 35 people. And we have a picture here. Um, also, sustainability, any youth public health capstone group finalized their recycling behavior change project at Killup and presented at their research symposium on May 5th and engaged 55 students with recycling education. Um, staff also carried out bin checks in the Rio and Brandon Homes neighborhood on May 23rd, and over 60 households received direct behavior change. Um, staff presented Coconino class high school about composting and climate action. And so we talked to about 17 students and got them really excited about gardening and composting. And upcoming events, uh, Bring Your Weeds to the Expert is this Saturday, and then on next Thursday, we're having another climate resilience project focused on community garden resilience at 5.30 p.m. at Bonito Garden, and then the next watershed cleanup series is on July 1st at 9 a.m. And then as for social media, we had we reached a lot of people, and the most successful post was the Hal Jensen Community Garden grand opening. So that was exciting to see that people are happy about new community gardens. Are those paddle tanks? These are Vago raised beds. And so it's by a brand called Vago, and they make raised beds that have like a specific material that's really user friendly. So they have like a nice lining. So um, it's easier to use, and having them raised is often makes gardening beds more accessible. So these are raised beds by Bago. They're a lot easier to carry. <laughs> and put together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's be honest. There, <laughs> the bottom is actually empty. Mm -hmm. And then you, we put in some uh, chicago hardware box. Yeah. So that ropes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we got them on sale. I think we got yeah. them at 50% off. Yeah. We, we had a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Any questions on that update? Thanks, Matt. Thank you. All right. Um, Paul, do you have anything else on that agenda item? No, nope, but I will have some uh, informational updates at the end of the meeting. Just quick ones. Okay, cool. Um, next up is 6B, so City of Flagstaff Recycling Update. Um, so that is, um, so Summer, thank, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And um, you have the floor. Um, and so, oh, awesome. <laughs> so I prepared a little presentation for you all, and I'm going to lean on Nicole a little bit to yeah. help me through some of this, yeah. but I'm hoping that we can just kind of dive into a little bit of the changes at the MRF, um, and then just talk about what we're looking forward to as far as recycling for the summer. We're really wanting to revamp our recycling outreach and education. And so we have some exciting plans for the summer. So um, yeah, next slide to you. So MRF updates, I actually just grabbed this information from the city website. This is, if you just type in solid waste, there's a link to a page that has all the most recent information about recycling and Flagstaff in the MRF. So these are just kind of some of the important points that I. So as some folks know, currently our materials are being hauled down to Phoenix. There's currently been some conversation, I think this past council meeting about um, seeking other haulers to make it more efficient. And so um, the MRF is still closed to the public as far as going inside, but we do have public drop off um, open available again. So, you know, anybody can come and bring their um, recyclable items and they have storing bins there. So that is open, but the facility itself is still closed to the public as the city now has control of the building and essentially we're assessing the situation um, to move forward and hopefully eventually again be able to um, sort and process materials ourselves here. But yeah, Nicole. Yeah, you absolutely. Um, so on Tuesday night, the council did approve the most recent an updated hauling contract press release is going out um, probably here in minutes. Um, this is going to, they're actually going to compact the product at the recycling that's co collected. And I'm going to press pause for just a second. Does everyone know what we're talking about that happened with our MRF? Um, it might be good to yeah let's up, 10, let, 10 that, I'll back up there yeah um so uh the city's long-term contract uh with norton environmental was scheduled to end this coming september um the uh, contract in and of itself um it was written in the 90s so let's just leave it there um and the <laughs> facility has a lot of antiquated equipment um, there was a lot of um, there are a lot of facility improvement needs, but Norton Environmental, not to speak for them, but my takeaway is that given that the contract was ending, there was not a lot of reinvestment in equipment repair and so forth. And they in April, gosh, I can't even remember April, they like had a small fire inside the building while trying to repair um, a piece of equipment. They shut the facility down and walked. And we did not have any notice. We knew of the fire and three hours later they shut the facility down and left. So um, we had to cancel residential hauling um, for a little over a week and we had to send all commercial materials to the landfill. So not an ideal situation. Um, we were able, and this is solid waste, um, Evan Tyrell, who is the new solid waste director, I think had been on staff for like two months and then this happened. So I just um, to flag <laughs> Um And he's done an amazing job trying to navigate this, lining up emergency contracts for a facility in Phoenix to take all of our material and it's raw material. It literally is being picked up by the residential and commercial trucks being dumped on the floor of the MRF. And I'm gonna pause here. There were three wor three solid weeks of straight cleanup at the facility before we can even re-enter it. That's how bad the conditions were um, in terms of safety. Um, our risk manager was like, uh-uh, 
And that's also why it's not open to the public. It is now um, a number of safety precautions are being incorporated, like an eye wash station, you know, all of these things. So um, that's why we know we have canceled tours at the MRF, but however, redirected them to the landfill, which is great. Um, all that aside, we have officially taken ownership back of the facility, um, terminated all contracts with Norton Environmental, and are up and running in terms of collections. Now, all of our material is going down to the city of Phoenix. It's being processed in Phoenix. Historically, our materials were being processed in Phoenix to market. So are we spending more money bringing materials down to Phoenix? Yes, because they have not been sorted. So contamination is a really big deal right now. So contamination is going to make our hauling more expensive and our product less efficient. So we have the campaign that, well, Summer will talk about, um, is going to really be focusing in that space. And then we basically are going to take our time to figure out what to do and what to do right in Flagstaff. And I don't want to steal your thunder, so keep going. Oh, no, thank you for giving that background. And I wasn't sure where folks were at. And yeah, it's been brought up before. I, I think that's helpful also just in case anybody is, is else is watching this, the, the recording of this. Yeah. Thanks. Full background. So yeah, um, with all of that being said, we are still accepting the same materials that we were before as far as root cycling goes. So this will stay the same um for the foreseeable future <laughs> and this is you know branding that we made several years ago and we're going to continue with it and run it and um revamp it in some ways as well so just to clarify for anybody who's wondering what can i still recycle it's the same that it's been um for the past several years so um yeah tia you can go to the next slide <clears throat> And this is just a list and we can send you all. Um, we have so many materials to hand out as far as what is and isn't recyclable. So would be happy to share this with with the commission just to have it on. So hand. do you mind if I press pause here for just a second? Because yeah. I think um, Summer and Kaylee have been doing residential waste audits. So literally going through people's recycling bins in certain neighborhoods and some of the things that we seeing most commonly um, are in terms of contamination, plastics, plastic bags included. So the wrong type of plastic bottles or well, the wrong type of plastics like yogurts containers and spinach containers, berry containers, all of those. Um, and paper napkins, paper towels, and to well, go packing, cups packing and materials. packing material. Yeah. Yeah, to go material. So yeah. um, no styrofoam, whoever's listening at home with a bucket of popcorn. <laughs> um, so, but yes, really important. Um, so we're really, and in, in, you know, Summer and Kaylee are working. We have a very limited budget. We have essentially $40,000 to do education and outreach for the entire community. Um, a quarter of that, if it actually more goes to Recycle by City as a website, we're reevaluating that. But for the lack of staffing and resources, we've leaned on that as a really powerful tool um, because our, our city's website didn't really have, doesn't have the capacity or capability that Recycle by City does or did at the time. So we're reevaluating that. But um, these bin checks are really important so we can be strategic in our outreach. And so, go ahead. Yeah, and Natalie came along last time too. Um, and it's just super helpful. I don't have a picture of it on here, um, but it essentially, every person who we do a bin check for essentially gets a tag for their bin of either like a looking good tag, if the contamination's usually like 10% or lower, we're like good, looking good. They get an oops tag if it's any more than that and it's not supposed to make people feel bad it's supposed to be an educational experience because it we have each of you know commonly misrecycled categories and we're able to kind of check the checkbox what things we found in there and make notes as well to just kind of 
help guide people. Um, this is a picture here. We, over the past year, have been putting out QR code stickers on the bins. That also goes to that Recycle by City website that Nicole was just talking to you all about. And that's linked here in this presentation. But it, it's very accessible um, and goes through all of the items that aren't and aren't recyclable. And also something new that we've added in the past few months is reuse options. So that's another leg of our work is not just recycling, but also um, waste reduction and reuse options. So if if I can interject for just a moment. Yeah. Um, so to be clear, if, if I'm doing the math right, recycle by city costs us ten thousand over ten thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Um, I, I've never heard of this website. Can you expand for just a moment on sure. what, you, what utility we get for um, money? Tia, can you actually try clicking on that? It might link you to. Oh, great. I was going to jump in on the chat. But okay. Yeah. You, mm -hmm. um, the Recycle by City. Well, it's essentially a home page and there's really great resources as far as like I said the materials that are accepted and aren't but there's also a recycling quiz on there so you can um, take the quiz and it'll test your knowledge and then you can also sign up for uh, reminders for bin pickups bulky those kinds of things so if anyone's been on the city of Blackstaff website you know that it's doesn't have is, that many customizable features um is there any way it. for um i'm going to share my screen oh, sorry no 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 you're fine are Just we adding to the technical difficulty <laughs> <laughs> um does recycle by city allow you to track um how many people are using it and how it is being mm -hmm. used mm -hmm. okay. yeah thank you yeah we do have that information and let me, like nicole said we've been using it for a while and it has served us well, but um, I think just with how technology has advanced and there might be more options at this point that might not cost us as much that will offer, um, you know, similar user friendly uh, modules and such. So. Yeah, so it will, for example, like be like, okay, this is. Yeah. Hoop. <laughs> stringy things <laughs> so yeah I mean it goes into a lot of detail one of the elements of Recycled by City that has been helpful for us is essentially the quiz and this had always been kind of the all right this is an educational tool that we can use um, in a very straightforward fashion and get people engaged so plastic bottles jugs jars are recyclable true other shapes of plastic or not. True. Woo. <laughs> and then it tells you a little bit more. Yeah. So, okay. And that cup schedule. And that is the other element of this um, is that you can put in your address. So, um, I wonder actually, because that's a commercial account, it might not pull it. That was a poor choice. Oh, look at that. So my garbage is on Monday. My glass is on the first Wednesday of every month. My recycling is on Thursday and bulky is every fifth week. And it, if you scroll down, there's a little calendar, I think, as well. Oh, oh it's nice. But so talks. our city's website cannot do this. Um, so we don't have that. So that's where, you know, we made the choice with having one staff person essentially and very little budget like okay this can reach a lot more people then yeah so okay thank you yeah you bet thank you i'm gonna stop sharing tia but we're open to suggestions like we're kind of in an exploratory space right now um you'll have recycled by a city through the end of the calendar year um but at that you know at that point, maybe we, it's an opportunity for us to transition to something else that makes more sense. So, um, and then, yeah, we we got into this already, but some of the things that we're doing currently are bin checks. Um, we do have so many of these physical 
door hangers, we have mailers, um, and then we also have physical signage. So right now we're working on building a bus campaign focused on recyclables. And um, so, and we're about to replace a lot of the signs downtown. So if you've seen on some of the receptacles down there, we have some existing signs, but they need to be replaced. And we're updating those with a QR code that will also be in other languages as well. So for our visitors that come to town, um, on to the next slide, Tia. And some of that education budget as well goes towards Willow Bend, one of our nonprofit community partners that actually does in-person um, recycling and waste reduction education with youth in the community. And then, um, like as Natalie mentioned in our monthly report, we've been doing consultations and presentations with businesses. We really want to step into this space more as well this summer, um, particularly focusing on the downtown uh, businesses around Heritage Square and uh, really promoting it first there. And then we're also tabling this summer at the Wednesday community market, and we are focusing on recycling and um, yeah, doing getting that direct outreach there. So and then this next slide here just kind of talks about more of what we're doing and something really exciting is that we have a new recycling education ELC AmeriCorps member. Fran just started with us this week and so um, her work plan really looks like that direct outreach and doing those bin checks because currently just with our capacity we've really only been able to do one neighborhood a month um, between Kaylee and myself and Natalie's and so we're really excited to have someone that's going to be very focused in that area. And today I actually just spent some time with um, some folks from our uh, videographer. We have a new videographer and we just filmed some what's recyclable, what's not content. And we're hoping to do a social media campaign and post some new videos on our city and uh, recycle by city websites as well. And then we're also doing CAF radio advertising. So trying to reach um, another audience base about recycling. And yeah, we're just trying to really revamp our campaign and um, make it very transparent of the things that we are accepting. And I know uh, there's still a lot of questions about what is and isn't, and we just want to yeah, bring it to the forefront and make people feel confident about what they're doing and take, a, take them along with us as we're in this transitionary space and hoping to be innovative with waste as we look forward to our new work for the next few years. So, um, yeah, and like I said, like if the commission has any suggestions or ideas for ways that we can reach folks best during our recycling campaign this summer, please let us know. <laughs> and we are we are open to any suggestions and ideas. So summer. Yeah. We've been toying around with a rebranding name. Um and We've got a couple <laughs> ideas, but more to come. Cool. The timing's right with everything that's going on with the Murph. Well, that's not, we even have to figure out a new name. We're going to change the name of that. As yeah, well. that'll be good. Because it's not a recovery <laughs> facility. It's a transfer station at this point. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, if, if, if I could, I'd uh, have a question, a discussion item. Um, I read an article in The Atlantic about a year ago, and it says that most plastic recycling doesn't get recycled. It just gets trashed. So we're spending a lot of money on nothing and making people feel guilty about sorting their plastics. And then we spend a whole lot of money moving them. And, I, you know, I guess we're kind of on that, you know. It would make economic sense just to say we're going to do metal, we're going to do glass, we're going to do paper, and screw it, we're lying to you. We've been the they, the the whole article in the Atlantic said that the plastic industry has invented this. Not, now maybe they're a skewed article, maybe it wasn't true, but they say we're just being sold a bill of goods to make us feel responsible for the unrecyclable plastics that they're putting in the market. 
there's like 200 kinds and it gets sorted in Phoenix and gets dumped somewhere. Um, I, I, I have no solution to this, but sometimes I think maybe we should just say, maybe if enough cities and counties and states just said, we need to ban certain types of plastics, that is the long-term solution. You know, this uh, spending all this money and trying to educate people, uh, and I guess that's all, I don't expect an answer, but if you have some uh, enlightenment, uh, I would welcome it. Uh, thank you. And thank you, you're doing, a, I think the program you're doing is, is fine, you know, so I'm not, please don't interpret any of this as, as criticism of us, you know, it's a, it's way bigger than Flagstaff. <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, 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 we'll take so. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Commissioner Byer, thank you for bringing that up, and you were exactly right. Um, this, so for example, the city of Phoenix takes all plastics because it's cheaper for them to do that than it is to try to educate and keep it out of their recycling stream. So they essentially sort it and landfill it. A lot of the plastics, not all. Um, so again, a lot of communities are facing that specific thing where it's cheaper for them to bring in all the contaminants because plastics are so prolific. Um, and the you know you look at other countries where the manufacturer is held reliable um yeah that's you know not something we are good at in the US by any means um and i don't anticipate especially in arizona um that that would be something we would be able to move forward um but it would be cool um but you're exactly right um and i think that we are in a really good space to have the hard conversations now because Really, we have a clean slate and we have the next couple years to really figure this out. Um, everyone in solid waste knows my opinion. I wish we had a massive digester and took basically like four steel, cardboard, aluminum um, and repurposed glass in a different way and then digested everything else. Um, but that's like a $25 million endeavor that is probably not going to happen. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, but we are going to be hosting either in late July or early, early August, essentially a state of the waste stream 2.0 uh, event to start having these hard conversations. Um, one of the things I will tell you is plastics have become incredibly light and their compaction space. Um, by volume is not expensive. So there's other elements to the financials um, that I really can't speak to very well. Um, but it is really interesting. We start really peeling back all these layers of the financial models that recycling um, is is built off of and how pre like precarious it really is. Um, plastics are my nemesis, <laughs> just saying. I have issues. I used to run recycling center back in the day. Um, I still have PTSD from the plastics um, and the kittens and puppies that would get dropped off. Um, but Danae, I don't know if you want to chime in with any experiences. Did, did Avondale run its recycling program? We send our recycling to City of Phoenix as well. Uh, but one that Chair White and Commissioner Breyer, is that right? Mm -hmm. I did um, at a conference I went to not long ago, I learned about a initiative that the state of Colorado has implemented. It's, it should just be underway now where it's basically a like producer pays. And so that model that Nicole is mentioning in other countries, the state of Colorado, they worked with um, Nestle and Coca-Cola Corporation to in basically incentivize those those corporations to either collect their own plastic back um, or pay yeah. and so yeah that would change you know i the more i learn in my years in this position is the financing um we have not been able to successfully get a bottle bill in the state of arizona uh, you say that's Colorado, not Colorado. No, no, yeah. Maybe it's happening. It's so close, you know. Yeah. It's like it can kind of, but we haven't even been able to get a bottle bill across uh, effectively, you know, 
Um, I think there's, and frankly, we haven't, as a city organization, we haven't tried to push the agenda since like probably 2013. But it may be time again to look at a bottle bill. So I think there's like multiple conversations um, for us to have here in depth. And I think that this will make for a good agenda item or possibly um, three or four agenda items or more <laughs> down the line. And I, I'm actually, um, we will, yeah, we would laugh a little bit about that, but I am actually serious like this, like what Commissioner Byer was saying, um, that would be a, um, that would be a really good, um, really good thing to talk about in depth sometime in the next two or three months. And we will um, invite the commission to the state of the waste stream. Thank you. Event. Yeah. Um, cool. Is there any, so again, Summer, thank you for your time. I know it's very valuable. <laughs> um, is there any, uh, um, other discussion um, is, are there any other comments or discussions uh, on um, on our current point of business before I move on? Would there be space to help shape the city of the waste room event? Like I think I would want to be more than just attending if I'm on the commission. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I will ask um, Kaylee to reach out to you. I, I would. Um, I mean, take, as a commission, you know. I, yeah. I, um, my, my schedule is um, difficult lately, but um, I would be interested in helping with that too. Okay. And um, that would be wonderful. And I, I was going to say I, I don't have any ideas off the top of my head, but I, I do do informal education and outreach for a living. And if you would like, um, if you would like to collaborate on, um, or if if you would like to collaborate in, in, in any way with me personally, then. Um, reach out and, and let me know. Um, we all have my contact information, at least the city staff does. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, we will, uh, Kaylee will be reaching out to you both. Thank you. And it, it actually is really critical that yeah, the commission can be part of this. Thanks. Um, any other, um, any other notes at this point of discussion before I move on? All right, well, again, Summer, um, thank you for, thank you for your time and for your expertise. And, um, Let's move on then. Um, so next up, uh, th thank you for your patience. We have a representative, um, Karen Hendricks from the um, Flagstaff Disc Golf Club um, to um, discuss an expansion of their um, neighborhood sustainability grant that they received a few months ago. Yes, um, so um, we had applied for the grant and were granted $5,000, which we still have in our bank account. And um, for the letter, I don't know if you could scroll down the letter a little bit, um, but basically the budget breakdown we have spent, we actually came in under budget and um, have installed two permanent bike racks. So we're hoping to encourage a lot of our participants to bike and utilize those racks as a multi-recreational uh, resource for, flex for folks in Flagstaff. And the, that those racks actually came down to four thousand sixteen dollars and thirty two cents. So we were hoping, um, we're we're proposing to use the remainder of the funds um, for some sustainable sustainably uh, produced benches um, for the letter. So uh, we're just seeking that permission, and the hope is we have some um, technical assistant to help us with. The, with assembling the benches. So basically the money is really just for the materials and the materials will be spent locally um, with using local materials uh, in abundance. So our hope is that we could have these benches uh, for our, our very large event that we're putting on uh, the world's uh, event, which also, as you may know or may not know, is uh, we're hoping it be a, a green sustainable event so I, I think you mentioned this in your letter but just to be clear the benches like they'll remain after the event correct correct yeah this is for everyone to enjoy um sometimes it's nice just to get outside and be in nature on nature something native uh the ponderosa pine uh slabs um absolutely and it'll be um uh, and you're planning on putting the benches around probably near the bike uh, probably near the bike rack that you set up um, at the disc course, uh, disc golf course in um, McPherson Park, right? 
I think I'm not totally sure where the uh, proposed locations are, but they would be on city property. Um, and I, I think we have seven uh, that I think we can make with the remainder of the funds. Oh, so that's amazing. That's impressive. Do you have do you have approval from the city yet to um, to 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 build these? Um, it would be parks. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So oh, and if I if you don't have that information, we can provide contacts for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah we will probably need to ask that permission um, and make sure that is okay. Um, okay. All right. Well. Um, Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments for Karen Hendricks? Yeah. I'm going to say my husband is a member of the small community, and he said everyone applauded the bike racks, and oh. we were all very excited that they were in, and it's been a long time coming, and he said the benches would be really nice. Thank you. Yeah. I, for one, am always a fan of more bike racks in town. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other comments or, or discussion points? questions um all right do we have um a motion on approving the flagstaff disc golf clubs um, proposed expansion of um of the scope of their grant i so move all right we have a motion from vice chair buyer do we have a second i'll second all right we have a second from commissioner mccormick um, all right, commissioners, you can um, you may unmute yourselves. Um, all in favor um, of the Flagstaff get disc golf Club's proposed expansion of the scope of their grant, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. All right, the motion passes, and um, so uh, um, so Karen as thank you for the um thank you for making good and efficient use of the of our system uh, of the sustainability grant money um I, I think that's really good work um so thank you thank you yeah thank you it wasn't just me it was a lot of other people yeah so, so as, as a yeah daniel Grimm. excellent very uh very they were involved yeah well as a representative of the flagstaff to sculpt club i i extend i extend my my thanks in the commission to your organization for, um, again, for making effective and efficient use of, of that grant money. Thank you. Thank you. And if I may just chime in and just applaud everyone, because I think we originally talked a year ago, was it probably more than a year ago, to help make this, you know, that the event itself, that the, the local folks have been really striving to make this event zero waste um, as functional as it can and so forth. So we really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking forward to working with you more on some other items that aren't necessarily on this agenda, but. Excellent. Yeah. We'll look forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for coming down. And yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Thank All you. right. And so, you know, if I, uh, if you don't stick around for the rest of the meeting, I don't think anybody will be offended. <laughs> you're welcome to, you're welcome to report. Video, so handsome. Thank you very much. I actually have a, a disc golf board meeting, so I appreciate that. No, well, so hopefully you'll enjoy the news. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thank you very much. And we'll get you Thank Amy's you. contact info regarding, uh, she's our parks assistant director, so. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you so much as well. Good to see you. All right. So next up is, I don't know, I think probably the big agenda item for this meeting. Um, so as as you all know, or most of you know, the um, there was a subcommittee over that's been meeting over the last um, well, six months, basically now, right, or five months, to um, to revise, to basically take what we learned the last couple of years um, of doing these neighborhood sustainability grants and, you know, try to revise the application process to just sort of make it incre incrementally, um, just sort of evolve it and make it incrementally better. Um, so you all should have, um, you all should have been emailed um, an updated or a proposed updated um, a sustainability grant application and also a scoring rubric um, scoring rubric um i my intent is also that that the rubric be made um available in its completion 
to the public so that applicants will know exactly what they're being scored on. Um, the intent with these also is that there will be also a little bit of a revision to these um, to the application and scoring process. Um, the intent with these is also that um, each um, the, the intent with these is that each application we get is scored by at least three commissioners. Um, commissioners can choose to score more than there's um, more applications than that would imply if they would like. Um, for example, I think uh, I. But each application will be scored by at least three commissioners. Um, and last year we tried. Um, last year we tried. Uh, basically doing these in terms of uh, applying um, of, of scoring the applications and then ranking them based on their score and then giving them another score based on the rank that each commissioner gives them. That worked well, but in order to make the our current system, um, the system that we're proposing work, we would have to go back to um, to be, to rating them on raw scores. Um, that's the only way to do it, I think, if we're at only having each application being scored by three commissioners. Um, in addition, um, so during the meeting where we would decide which applications get funded, um, any applications that stick out to any of the commissioners that we want to talk about are fair game to talk about, but we would, um, you know, there's a cutoff line at which point um, the the proposals above the line get funded and the proposals below do not. And we would set aside time specifically to to discuss the three applications above and the three applications below um, that cutoff line to see if any of them um, to see if there's any that we would like to prioritize uh, above others in those sort of um, borderline situations. Um, so again, I don't know how all this will go with this discussion. Um, if we want to just approve all of this, as a um, as a whole package as a commission, then um, this will take us five minutes. But I do I did want to leave time for discussion because I, I understand that this is a lot to um, that this is a lot to approve as one package. So um, and I am totally um, I'm very uh, and I am totally amenable to any discussion or um, or proposed modifications to any any of these points that anybody would like to bring up. Um, before we move to that, I would like to extend a, a very large and very sincere thanks to the other subcommittee members, um, Commissioner Steiger and Commissioner Conkle, and also to Tia and um, to, to Nicole, and also especially to Tia, who um, who were both uh, uh, Tia in particular was um, was was extremely active in the process, and um, Brianna, our previous um, liaison, was also involved as well. And, I doubt that she's around, but if one of you could relate. She's taking notes. Oh, she is. OK, cool. So Brianna, thank you um, for your role on this as well. All right, so um, at this point, I would just like to sort of open the floor to discussion, um, both from commissioners and staff members. Um, are there parts of these that you don't like, that you like? Are there parts of this um, of the, this new process and group and application that that you would like to that you would like to revise? Um, sure, I'll um, I'll chime in. I, I did read it, and I think it's superb. You know, so as one of the minority commissioners who weren't on the subcommittee, I I thank you guys. I think it's great. I really like the way you broke down the points within each subcategory. You know, it's one, two, three, four. So you made it less subjective criteria. I think it'll make the scoring go much better. Um, I did have a. Maybe later I'll I'll just send you a, a couple of minor things in terms of wording that I'll uh, it's it's what I call freight train wording you know where you have like four nouns put together and yeah. some of them are adjectives yeah. so there's there's a couple of little cases where I'll suggest uh, just reordering it a little bit put a preposition in or something um, but I don't think that should be discussed I was trying to think though is there anything that we didn't do. You know, I think the uh, criteria are, are clear and I love the point breakdown. I do remember the last time there were a couple proposals, and I guess that would just come in the discussion. There were a couple of proposals where they it was a bigger project and you know, the 5,000 we were giving them was a 
small fraction of the big project and they didn't do a good job of uh, describing where the other money came from or you know how the project would fail or succeed based on our part of it. But I guess I would not suggest that we put in some specific language on that. We'll that's just something commissioners will bring up in the discussion. So um, yeah, so I will I will just with, withdraw that <laughs> that comment. I don't want to have another scoring the budget for completeness. It's just something we'll talk about. No worries. And um, one point of order, I guess. Um, again, my my hope is that, um, and I do actually think that scheduling wise, we need to um, to have some version of this approved by the end of the uh, meeting today. Um, if Commissioner Buyer, um, if Commissioner Buyer proposes non-substantive proofreading edits to the text of the document. Um, can those be incorporated later, or does the document need to be um, need to be approved word for word by the? Um, so, it, so let me rephrase that. Um, if um, if we approve the document, um, or if we approve these documents, is that word for word what we have to present to the public, or minor proofreading changes down the line? We can make minor proofreading changes. Okay. So it's more the substantial, like um, substantial. Right. That's substantive. substantive. Yeah. <laughs> cool. And, yes, and I will yes. further so, state. I mean, the, <laughs> the word smooth. It's, oh my. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's the end of the day. Help. It's the end of the day. It's been a long week. It's the, the it's wordsmithing the, and just kind of the grammatic checks and all of that. That is that does not have to be. We're talking yeah. about the 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 yeah. major content and the framework of the grant. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. But very, thank you for asking. Yeah. Thank you very much, Nicole. Um, <laughs> no, it, the, 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 my responses. I, I the, the str the, so speaking as a lifelong stutterer, the I don't know if, I don't know how much that is for you, but for me the struggle is real. Yeah. I, I was laughing because I sympathize. Um, all right. Th thank you, Commissioner Beyer. Um, are there any other comments or points of um, discussion? Mine is also one that's not um, having to do with the substance of the document. It's more the just very minor thing with the rubric. Um, when this is presented to the public, I don't know if we're going to do some um, finessing of the format so that uh, that last on the second page, that last one gets kind of the points get separated from the descriptors. Um, just very small thing um, so that that's maybe all on two pages or whatever the case is that the boxes don't get split apart because of, you know, the text was rich in the boxes and pushed us to the third page. I imagine like we could, if nothing else, we could tinker, like we could tinker with the font and margins to, to fix, to fix that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Do we put things like, um, uh, I don't know if this is technically an official city document. It probably is not, but I don't know if we have a header or a watermark or something that could go on it um, to identify. I think the title is at the top, but I don't know if there's other, again, like minor kind of formatting things, design things, I suppose. Yeah, honestly, the, the design formatting, I, I assumed we could take care of after this meeting. Yeah, and I think that, you know, we will, we, we can, Send it out again, just and if there are any additional formatting concerns or kind of um, grammatical concerns, we can get those fixed. And so that won't require a vote. And so we could in, send those out to the commission, and then the commissioners could individually respond if they see any to TIA. So it's not a group email and like, hey, there's. Uh, extra period here, or let's you, you know, this could be better stated um, and make those suggestions so we can take care of it in that manner as well. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Steiger. Um, all right, are there further? Are there further notes? I'll just echo that I thought this was really great. I'm hopeful that it makes scoring easier and also improve the quality of the proposals that we get and help people make sure they're complete um, and easy to find the information that we want. 
I had a question about 17, the um, about greenhouse gas emissions. I'm assuming that that's getting towards um, making sure the project is in line, like the example of the church that wanted to put in the mm -hmm. heat, the heater or whatever. Um, but I'm a little concerned that that is going to make people very nervous because they may not understand how to calculate greenhouse gas emissions. They may assume that we're asking them to do something that is not comfortable, like they don't have access to that. So I don't know what we can do to maybe rephrase it so people don't freak out when they see it. And also, I didn't know if we wanted to say, and also, are you um, cutting greenhouse, you know, gas emissions? Just to project. Thanks, Commissioner McCormick. Um, Nicole, you had a suggestion. I'm wondering if uh, it's the reframing the, uh, so the city of Flagstaff is committed to carbon neutrality when the, within the next decade. How does this project contribute to the city's goals? Could be a way. And I think there's another opportunity here, though, that we could provide some links to calculators. Um, there's, for example, if someone were applying in the waste realm, the EPA has a program called WARM um, that does calculations on initiatives that reduce emissions. Okay. Danae, I don't, again, putting you on the spot, but do you have any thoughts here in this space? I do kind of see where, Commissioner, you're coming from with this being a little bit of a leap for somebody that's not in the space. Um, is there an opportunity, maybe just like phone, you know, phone the flight staff office for help? On yeah, this? I think we could offer that for sure. And a couple additional resources, um, online tools, but then, you know, need help here, call sustainable the staff. Okay. Yeah, I think I like that. And I, I kind of do like Nicole's phrasing um, also because. Like, how does this project contribute to the city's? Yeah, because it's a it's a positive phrasing instead of a negative one. Yeah, yeah. and you could link the carbon neutrality plan to mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, do for that? I think okay. it, um, if, uh, in the notes it will be captured there, and then when the overarching vote is made. So you will add for a motion for the overarching concept and we'll just make some of these changes. Okay. Note that now. Um, okay. Um, Nicole and um, Commissioner McCormick, thank you both. Um, are there any further points? Um, are there any more points of discussion or questions or comments or proposed revisions? All right. I just, um, I'll just ask you know, um, in, in terms of the uh, the minor editorial suggestions, to whom should they be directed? You know, so I don't want to dump it on everybody. Who's going to be doing the editing? Uh, we'll we'll take Tia will um, spearhead those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Tia. <laughs> yeah. Is that good, Chair White? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Tia, I'm, I'm happy to help with that as well. Um, just let me know, okay? Okay. And just as a reminder for the commissioners, we do host a grant application workshop. Um, so we will, in that, you know, I think what we'll do is really heavily flag number 17 as well to ensure that people understand that there are resources, not only with sustainability staff, but then some online tools as well, because we recognize not everything is going to have an online resource. But yeah. Okay. All right. Um, again, thank you. Um, anything else? All right. So, um, how much of this do I actually I actually have to verbalize? Um, do we have a motion? Um, to approve the overarching concept uh, proposed during the last few minutes for the um, for this year's neighborhood sustainability grant. This includes the updated um, application, the updated applications with um, um, 
with the proposed modifications, um, the updated scoring rubric, and the updated scoring method. Sounds great. I'll I'll move to approve. <laughs> so, um, Commissioner McCormick, I think Vice Chair Byer got there just a fraction of a second first. So, I, I do we have a motion for from Vice Chair Byer to um, to approve. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, we have a second from Commissioner McCormick. Um, do we have any? Um, so, a motion is made. Um, do we have any? Further, do we have any discussion on said motion? Hearing no discussion, um, let's bring it to a vote. Um, commissioners who are online, please unmute yourselves. Um, all in favor of the motion on the table, please say aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. The motion passes. And Huzzah. Um, <laughs> well done, everyone. Um, yeah, uh, again, a sincere thanks to everybody for um, your involvement with um, with this task. I, I think this is, um, again, I anticipate, you know, there's more to learn every year, and I, I'm sure that the grant application and, it's, and the process that attends it will um, continue to evolve, but I think that this is going to be a, a big step forward. So, um, again, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> and it was a lot of work. All right. Um, next item is um, just listed as ordinance discussion. And um, Nicole, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Um, <laughs> Mayor, we're having some technical issues, hence the shifting around of a laptop <laughs> for a camera. Um, yeah, so this has come up uh, occasionally over the last few years. The Sustainability Commission's ordinance was actually drafted by me in 2007. What? Um, and so it, um, and Tia, do you happen to have the, would you bring the actual ordinance? Thank you. There, let there uh, and let me clarify, there was an update to the ordinance that um, was specific to some uh, clarifications coming out of the clerk's office. I think in 2013, don't quote me on that, but um, it didn't change any of the whereas statements or the focus of the ordinance. And so um, this is a former um, chair had brought this to the commission's attention. Gosh, I want to say like five or six years ago, just saying, hey, is this ordinance still relevant? Um, and it, as you can see, um, and Tia, I hope you don't mind if you um, scroll down slowly, but the second whereas statement um, talks about adopting a resolution in 2006, which was the U.S. Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement, which was actually the resolution that created the job that I first stepped into in 2007. Um, and what uh, I was able to focus on was taking what was called a clean and green committee um, that focused on weed abatement and some litter removals um, and create a commission um, called the Sustainability Commission. And if you scroll down a little bit further, the establishment of the commission section starts to discuss um, kind of the general framework, standard three-year terms. Um, but if you get into the purpose, powers, and duties, this is an area that is um, up for discussion in terms of, is there an opportunity to make this, um, to update section A, um, and section B to better support the sustainability division. Um, again, at the time, sustainability was a program uh, and we didn't actually have a sustainability plan. We didn't have a climate action and adaptation plan or a carbon neutrality plan or uh, a rethink waste plan. And so there's been a lot of updates. Now, with all that in mind, um, the commission itself cannot request that an update be brought forward. But the commission liaison, city council liaison, which is Vice Mayor Aslan, can. So we thought that 
um, as T and I were looking at this, we thought we would just start the conversation with the commission um, and encourage the commissioners to take a look at the existing ordinance. It's it's very short, um, it's three pages long, um, and and see if you feel that there is some. Um, this is a valid discussion to have with the vice mayor. Uh, he cannot be here today. He is on on holiday, um, so he is out of country. But if that is the case, then at the next meeting that he is available for, then having a discussion with with the vice mayor as the Sustainability Commission Council liaison. Again. Um, Tia did check in with the city clerk's office and we were informed that that is what steps are now needed because we do have the council liaisons. So really this is just a preliminary um, discussion for the commissioners to see if there's even interest in this space uh, to update it and or align the powers, the the purpose of the commission, uh, not powers, excuse me, the purpose of the commission and the focus for the commission. Does it in the long run change anything for the commission? No, um, you're still going to function as is. Uh, we'll still continue to the, do the work we're doing. This would just look at an ordinance that is 16 years old and see if there's an opportunity to revise it. And that's really all I had. Tia, did you want to add anything? I was just oh, going to say that I'll share it um, after the meeting so folks can look at it. Thank you. Right. It looks like forward. Vice Chair Byer has a question. Um, oh, yeah, um, Vice Chair Byer, go ahead. Yeah, so I, I guess uh, this at a meeting a few months ago. I mentioned, and I think this kind of fits in with this observation. I once went to the city website and saw that we have approximately 50. You know, so uh, as we rewrite this, we might want to think of what do we really want this commission to do? And I guess, you know, I would invite the mayor to think maybe we should reduce our commissions from 50 down to maybe 20, you know, and, you know, and, uh, you know, figure out ways to engage you know it's nice that we have so many commissioners it's so many ways for citizens to engage but it's kind of like you know we're we're dissecting <laughs> issues so finally i don't know if it makes sense and again i'm i have no particular recommendation except that i i do think we'd probably be um i think it would be, I, i've never heard of another city that has as many commissions so um something to think about so um, I'll leave it at that. All right. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks, Vice Chair Byer. Um, are there any further um, comments or questions on the current order of business? Oh, we have a hand up. Oh, sorry. Um, Commissioner Steiger, go ahead. Yeah, no worries. All I'll say is I love the idea of looking at this and kind of aligning our our mission and our purpose with um, the city sustainability office and getting on the same page. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. Um, any further questions, comments, or concerns? All right. Well, um, this is um, agenda item at this point, so there's no. I don't believe there's any votes to be made. Um, yep. So. I'm just sorry, I'm giggling because <laughs> Natalie is like acting as like a <laughs> the, yeah, turntable with the laptop. All right, well, um, thank you, Nicole. Yeah. Um, thank you, gotcha. Mayor Daggett, for your presence. Um, so I think the next, um, so no, no more, um, no more comments in this order of business. Um, all right, moving on. Um, next is to and from. So. Any anything that this this is just a time for any of the commissioners to share anything that they have to share with us or any of the other people in attendance may do the same. Um, anything anyone wants um, wants to share now? Go ahead. Nicole, um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. 
Great. Um, and this will be in next month's report, but I just have to say I'm so excited. So I'm going to share um, that this past Tuesday night, the city council uh, formally approved an award of contract to for the engage, empower and elevate program. Uh, the commission has heard about E3 in the past and just as a refresher, the um, Engage, Empower, and Elevate program works with a community-based organization to address a couple of different challenges that we face in our community. The first being litter, and the second being our unsheltered community members. And the E3 program um, essentially pays community unsheltered community members a hourly wage, which is a Flagstaff hourly wage, to help us clean up litter in our community and um, there's a lot of emotional elements to to that engagement uh, that we could talk about all evening but I will say that the grant that we issued last year uh, went out to CATS the community assistance team and um, they did an amazing job to launch this program, um, and they use the CATS mobile, which allows our unsheltered community members to take showers. Um, they can get new clothes um, and uh, cleaning uh, or uh, uh, hygiene supplies. And uh, if, if I can interject for anyone who doesn't know, the um, that vehicle was one of the recipients of a sustain of a neighborhood sustainability grant. Um, was it last year or two years? Two years ago. So thank you. Yeah, I was just going to share that. No, no, no. That's great. I'm so glad you remember. And um, the neighborhood sustainability grants helped them finish off that shower in the bus. Um, and so they were awarded the five year contract um, on Tuesday evening, which is really important for a small community based organization to have that consistent funding. Um, and in addition, we were able to secure an additional 30,000 for them from the Arizona Department of Housing. So year one will have 60,000. And the coolest part of this, and this is why I want to share it, and I'll try not to cry because it just made me so happy and proud of the work that they're doing. Um, they were able to hire a unsheltered community member who was part of the program last year um, as part of their workforce. And this individual is still unsheltered, um, but he is going through the Goodwill workforce uh, training to, to enter back into the workforce and has been hired by CATS to help, essentially help run this program now that is being funded. And so it's just a perfect example of how important the money and the work that the neighborhood sustainability grants can help. That was a pivotal um, element of them being able to get that bus up and running. And um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done. Don't get me wrong, but it's amazing that even some small seed money, um, what it can lend itself to. So just I know the neighborhood sustainability grants are a lot of work, but they are really powerful. Um, so thank you all. Thanks so much, Nicole. That's and I, I want to extend my thanks to the city council for um, for both for the neighborhood sustainability grants and also for um, for the. I'm sorry, I, the, the name of the other grant that you just the engage in power and elevate. Oh, no, the, yeah, no, engage in power and elevate. Yeah, That's the one I was meaning. Yeah, so b b both of those grants, I um, we really do appreciate um, city council for um, for providing money for those and um it's absolutely fantastic news nicole thank you yeah cool. um thank you any other to and from i know uh we wanted to bring up one thing um just that we're gonna try to um or stacy fobar city clerk is gonna help us uh try to get some of the appointments in front of city council on july 3rd um and it's I believe we have another application coming in and then we'll hit the five um, applications needed for our current two vacancies. That's wonderful. Um, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so been working on some recruitment lately. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. Th thanks very much. And um, yeah, we've. It's taken a while to recruit people. Is there any other to and from?
All right. Um, next up is future agenda item requests. And um, if so, as uh, both commissioners and staff and anybody in attendance at this meeting can request items to put on our future agenda. Um, commissioners, you are also welcome to email Tia um, with requests for agenda items as well, but it, it is preferable to um, to bring them up during this meeting so that um, everything is um, everything is accessible to the public. So that said, are there any future um, requests for future agenda items? I guess the only one we brought it up earlier, talking about and the recycling, the taking the recycling program in some new directions, you know, so I think that's and I think there was broad support for doing that. And I just let's list it here again so it doesn't get lost. Thank you, Thank you Vice Chair Byer. Um, yeah, I'll add that if we can think about your event, you know, dedicate some time to these. Uh, to that during these meetings, that would be nice. Great. You bet. Thanks, Commissioner McCormick. If you need it. Any other um, any other agenda item requests? Just a quick update. Uh -huh. um, we do have a contact at the Forest Service to uh, potentially discuss the revegetation in the burn scar because I know that's been on the future agenda item list for quite a while. Uh, so uh, we're following that lead, and hopefully we. Will. I um I tremendously appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you bet. Cool. Of course, of course. Um, anything else? Thank you for your patience with all the technology glitches. Need <laughs> It's that special city council meeting tomorrow that stole all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we we are doing just fine, and we're making do. Yeah. And I think this has been a productive meeting, so no harm done. Um, anything else before we adjourn? All right. Um, <laughs> all right. The June of 2023 Sustainability Commission meeting is now adjourned. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time and uh, for your time, effort, and skill. And um, I'll see most of you next month and a lot of you before that. Great. Thank you. Everyone take care. Thanks, everyone. Thank you Thanks. so much, everyone. Bye. Have a great one. Thanks so much, Nat.